Welcome, and this is a very interesting looking stomach and we thought we'd want to share with you. Uh, so this is a young uh, lady with um, a diagnosis, can we say? Um, so let's break it down. So really, if we look through this in the stomach, this is the body of the stomach, all, all the way down um, to the uh, antrum uh, here. And so the antrum is also involved, uh, but relatively spared compared to the body. Um, and then the duodenum, uh, we'll just show you. Uh, it'll be good to get some Infocol to clean maybe. Um, the duodenum is relatively spared, so you don't see much in the duodenum. And if we come back into the bulb, uh, we'll just put some uh, semethicone down so that we can see better. Um, but I don't really see too much in the duodenum. So whatever this pathology is, it's not giving um, it's the first important observation is that there's not much in the way of uh, we can check that. Uh, of course, this means that it's unlikely to be one of the um, standard process syndromes because normally they come along with duodenal polyps. Not impossible, but not uh, also not. Um, so then let's break down this appearance. You have um, quite a lot of scarring in the background and then you have these red patches. Um, if we go up to them and interrogate them, they're relatively villous looking. Um, so this frond-like appearance, almost like a tubular villous adenoma in the colon, uh, and very dark on uh, BLI. So if we go, uh, well, first LCI, where they really show up nicely, but then BLI, when you can see that these, these spots are very dark uh, and frond-like with this villous architecture that you might expect of a colon polyp. And the background also looks a little bit like the duodenum um, underneath these villous fronds, whereas you might think that something normal stomach architecture looks a little bit like this. Um, then this is not what it looks like here in the background, when you here you have the background of these little uh, villous uh, fronds. So, as we, okay, this is the antrum, relatively spared, but then the body, it's very difficult to distend the stomach, so let's take uh, the blue light imaging off very difficult to distend the stomach. So we have to sit here. This is actually, you can see that this villous mass here that's sitting on the incisura, so right in the center of the image now is the incisura. Um, this is really preventing distension. It's kind of hanging off the, um, off the incisura. And as we pull back up into the body, you can see the body is really where the bulk of this disease is. The fundus is relatively spared. Um, so the cardia and the body are where this disease is. And if we describe it a little more, you have, uh, again, this background um, uh, villus change, which you can see elsewhere, with scarring, significant scarring going on in the background here. Um, so that's the pale areas between the, the villus fronds. And as we come up, it's not involving the esophagus at all. You can see the very nicely the squamous mucosa of the esophagus here. Um, and then as we push in, there are these very large structures. Um, so here, uh, one here hanging off the incisor, another one here hanging off in a different direction, very hard to see. Uh, so this is probably um, Menchier's disease or villous hypertrophy of the stomach. And this um, is something which um, is, uh, can, be, can be a difficult disease to treat. It can be secretory, it can cause anemia, it can also, um, progress into malignancy at a certain point in time. And from this appearance, it's very difficult to tell at what stage this disease is. For sure, um, there are multiple treatment options for these patients. One option is to um, uh, do, remove the whole stomach, of course, and then the disease is gone. One option is to survey it. But if you're going to survey it, and this actually speaks nicely to how you should do endoscopy in general, you must take a series of photographs which can be orientated later. So let's try doing that. We're pointing right up with the greater curve at uh, nine o'clock and the less curve at three o'clock. We're coming down into the um, antrum. We'll take another clock face orientation of the antrum. So right now, if we can try and get it, we've got the incisura at 12 o'clock um, and therefore we've got uh, some sort of orientation on the antrum. I mean, this is probably more the anatomical, but it's quite difficult to get uh, in this position. Um, and then we take a series of standard photos, including the incisura to see really if we're going to do surveillance, uh, of course we're going to take biopsies, but biopsies as you can probably tell from this mass of lesion is not going to be particularly representative. So all these photos that I'm taking uh, and I'm kind of coming up in a curl spiral up into stomach 
where I think uh, you saw a nice presentation in our upper GI course about how to do that. Uh, we want to take a lot of photos so that basically later we can detect any change in this disease um, and uh, see if, if it was present before or not. And we can do the same thing uh, with uh, BLI. Of course, it's a little bit more difficult to see far in the distance with BLI. It's kind of an up-close modality um, because when, for example, we do this, because the light is absorbed by all this uh, structures, you really can't see much into the distance, even though this is a bright modality of BLI. Uh, and then we should probably just spend a little bit of time characterizing, making sure we're not missing anything with an irregular pattern. I think here, really, it's useful as a human to just focus on what's regular and what's irregular. Uh, and we don't see anything um, here uh, that is irregular, not for me. I'm not seeing anything. And we're spiraling up here, just trying to look at everything, get a good view of everything. But of course, what's very, very important for this patient is to know that even if we see nothing, and even if we biopsy, there's a risk, for example, and if we just look at this lesion again, there is a risk that under one of these things for me, like in particular this thing, that, that there is something buried that you cannot access with a biopsy forceps. So this needs to be clearly discussed with the patient. Uh, of course, we're gonna do surveillance, and then the question is um, what sort of course of action and the patient takes at, at what time. So I do think there's a role for mapping biopsies. You can choose whatever protocol you want, whatever city you want to come from, Sydney, Cambridge, any of those are available. Uh, they just describe a, um, a mapping pattern of biopsies. Um, and that starts with the um, antrum normally. It then goes to the incisura and you take a, a mapping set of biopsies in the uh, corpus and then some in the fundus. But of course, um, it's really a discussion with the patient because at the end of the day, we cannot completely know whether there is um, buried cancer in this disease. All right, well, we'll go ahead and take those biopsies. Uh, thanks so much for watching and post your comments and questions about this uh, below uh, here. Thanks very much for watching. Bye-bye. Open.